Welcome back to our channel, Elementary My Dear. Where we make nutrition science easy for you to digest. So today we're talking about the nutritional implications of oral contraceptives. So make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss one of our videos. Oral contraceptives. The pill, birth control pills. What else are they called? I think the pill is like the one that people normally go for. Oral contraceptives are one of the top contraceptive methods that are out there. It's one of the most common ones that are used. But interestingly, they're used for other purposes as well, including things like acne and endometriosis and PCOS, menstrual cramps to regulate menstruation. Yes, way beyond preventing pregnancy. And you know what's actually very surprising to me when I was looking into this is that really the only alternative use for oral contraceptives is acne. So I know like so many people who have PCOS and the first thing that their doctor does is give them oral contraceptives, but apparently it has not been like approved for that yet. Reading that, I was also kind of blown away because I have friends that, you know, especially in high school and stuff, maybe had like really irregular mm -hmm. periods or really heavy periods. Yes. And they were also prescribed birth control. So the, the idea that it's actually, at least in the US, not approved for those types of things is very, very interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think it's, I mean, at least anecdotally, it does seem to be effective. It's definitely true. I think honestly, probably the majority of my friends have been on the pill, at least at some point as a form of, of birth control. So like mm. there are quite a few women who are on it. They're quite effective mm -hmm. at preventing pregnancies as well. Apparently, you know, with perfect use, they're almost 100% effective. 99.7% to be exact. <laughs> but with typical use, actually the effectiveness goes down to 91%. So I don't know what you people are doing, but <laughs> Uh, I think like the typical use thing is like, you know, if you miss one or four, four. <laughs> like, that I guess is the typical use and then the ideal use is like you take it every day at the same, exact time. same time and yeah. And one thing about those percentages that I think that people kind of get like a little bit mixed up is they like 99.7% effective would mean like if you had sex a thousand times, then in three of those, did I do the math yes. on that? Yeah. Okay. In three of those times, <laughs> you would get pregnant. But the way they actually do these studies is that it's over the course of a year. So, in out of one thousand people who are taking oral contraceptives, in one year, three of them would experience or like would get pregnant. I remember like seeing the stats. I'm like ninety one percent effective. That seems like very, very low. It's not as guaranteed as you would like. As right? you would like, but yeah. But you know, when you think about the whole year side, it's a little bit, you know, more uh, reassuring, I guess. Agreed, yes. agreed. So y'all might be asking, do we make a shift to like a gyno channel? What are we doing? Why are we talking about this? We're a nutrition channel, and we're gonna be actually talking about the nutritional implications of oral contraception. Oh, oh. Uh, oral contraceptives does not roll, roll off, off your tongue. tongue. No matter how many times I say it, it feels uncomfortable. Can you like the birth control? Pill. Yes, okay. Let's I just think call people, it like, the pill. I think people are more familiar with that. The pill. Fair enough. Before we go into the nutritional implications, perhaps we could just talk about how they work. Yes. Because, of course, you know, it, it is hormonal and most of them contain estrogen and progestin, which basically mimics our natural progesterone. There is another form of pill that just has the progestin piece, but most people are on the combined pill. Birth control pills, they basically inhibit ovulation. And so, in our natural cycles, there are two main hormones that are involved in ovulation. There's one called follicle stimulating hormone or FSH and luteinizing hormone or LH. Mm -hmm. So FSH basically helps mature our follicles inside our ovaries. So it helps make take those immature follicles and make them grow into mature eggs. And then we have the luteinizing hormone or LH that actually prompts the release of the mature egg from the ovaries into the fallopian tube. That's what the actual ovulation is. So when that happens, our bodies naturally increase levels of estrogen and progesterone. When those levels are high in our bodies, it ends up being like a negative feedback loop to inhibit the levels of FSH and LH so that, you know, your ovaries don't keep releasing eggs over and over again. Now, if the egg gets fertilized, the levels of estrogen and progesterone will keep staying high throughout the course of the pregnancy. This is where the birth control pill kind of comes in and tries to mimic that state of the cycle. Because we're taking in estrogen and progestin, which your body treats as progesterone, those levels of FSH and LH kind of stay inhibited. 
so your body isn't kind of ovulating or you know maturing those follicles or releasing the egg consistently over time if you don't release the egg there's no egg for a sperm to fertilize and therefore pregnancy can't happen another interesting effect of birth control that was kind of found afterwards it seems like is that also having progestin and estrogen from the pill increases the viscosity of the cervical fluid which makes it like not very nice for sperm to swim through so it has like a few different ways that it works first the egg doesn't develop fully it doesn't get released and also the sperm, sperm if they do get there are not very happy anyone who has talked to their doctor about going on the pill knows that they like give you a long list of side effects that are on there you hear things from your friends your mom your aunties about all the different things that could happen if you're on the pill and i think one of the things that is you know sometimes a deterrent for people from going on the pill is weight gain and I, I definitely have heard that like among my friends before that oh the pill made me gain weight my body changed in this way or this way and you know what there has been quite a bit of research into this question very surprisingly and against kind of that uh anecdotal um I guess, wisdom that we have. Uh, there's been two Cochrane reviews, um, and so that basically is like a very, very fancy kind of review. If you've watched our video on the hierarchy of evidence, we talk about uh, meta-analyses, like Cochrane is like the gold standard of like meta-analyses. So there's been two Cochrane reviews about either progestin only, pills on weight over time and on the combination pills that's the estrogen and progesterone together pill uh, on weight over time and actually what they found is that there really isn't a difference between those who are on the pill and those who aren't so the amount of weight gain that we see in people is just typical of what happens with aging the theory is that it's kind of just a confounding factor that you go on the pill maybe in adolescence or early adulthood and you know you're not fully developed yet and then you know as you get older you start to gain weight with age and it's come almost like you're creating like a correlation between the two just because they happen at the same time and this isn't to dismiss any personal experience i think on an individual level perhaps mm -hmm. you know it, i think any drug any anything that you consume or ingest could affect different people in different ways i think it's just that on a population level we don't see those significant differences in weight change you may be wondering okay well we might not see changes in in weight but I went on the pill and I had changes in my body weight distribution and that is actually somewhere where we do see differences we see that typically uh, people who are on oral contraceptives have more weight distribution in their lower body and tend to have more of a pear shape, which actually makes a lot of sense when we look at the role of estrogen in fat distribution in the body. It's so interesting. Uh, when we were looking up research on this topic, there were some like studies done with monkeys, female monkeys of reproductive age. Their weight is monitored for a little bit, and then some of them are given oral contraceptives, and they're like weight and body fat percentage. And all that is mm -hmm. like continue to be monitored and it's weird because in monkeys it actually seemed like the body fat percentage and weight actually went down so with those that were taking the oral contraceptives mm -hmm. a lot of this research i had because we were thinking like okay why are they giving monkeys birth control pills and i feel like it's because you couldn't really do a randomized control trial where like you may or may not be on a drug that won't get you pregnant good luck but i mean and we were t talking about it's like even when doctors prescribe birth control pills they do typically also advise so they that you have still another use another method yeah. of contraception so i feel like i guess so but like the ethics committee might be like it might be a little these people think they may or may not be on birth control oh i don't know I don't know, I think that's definitely like a limitation of some of the research. That makes sense, yeah. that makes sense. So as you can imagine, you know, hormones play such an important part in our body. They do so many different things. So I think it's perhaps intuitive that it could have nutritional implications. Mm -hmm. there, there has been, you know, even decades back, quite a bit of research on whether the nutritional needs of people that are on birth control change as a result of being on the pill and i think especially early on mm -hmm. so maybe like the 50s 60s yeah. a lot of these birth control pills they had a very high amount of estrogen in them it did seem like there would be a lot of negative impacts on the nutritional status of people that are on birth control typically when you think of like 
drugs and like the side effects of drugs, you think, okay, well, this is going to be completely detrimental for every nutrient. But there actually are a couple where being on birth control can actually improve your body's stores. The first one we're going to talk about is iron, which probably is not a huge surprise, um, you know, especially if you watched a video about iron. As we mentioned before, a lot of times birth control pills are prescribed to help people that may have really heavy menstrual bleeding. Birth control pills can help kind of regulate that and maybe minimize the amount of blood loss every month. People that menstruate do tend to need higher amounts of iron because there is a significant amount of blood loss on a monthly basis. So so as you can imagine, you know, when you're taking birth control pills, if you know that menstrual flow is on the lower side, that means that, you know, the amount of iron that you're losing on a regular basis is reduced. However, because a lot of pe people that menstruate, you know, with those higher needs don't actually end up taking in that high, those higher needs, this doesn't mean that if you're on birth control that you can, you know, intentionally cut down on your iron, iron intake <laughs> because yeah we know that this is a common problem with a lot of people that menstruate even if you are menstruating less that doesn't mean that you're complete like you're not menstruating at all and that completely like, cuts out the needs that you might have there aren't guidelines for people who are on oral contraceptives who menstruate and people who menstruate who are on oral contraceptives they kind of just have to get the value based on what meets the needs for like, I think it's like 97.5% mm -hmm. of the population. I can tell you most people who menstruate not meeting the iron needs. Then we also have a vitamin called niacin or vitamin B3. And niacin is involved in converting food to energy that our bodies can actually use called ATP. What's really cool is that our bodies are actually also able to produce niacin. This happens if you're taking in a higher amounts of tryptophan an amino acid that you get from protein rich foods. So if your body ends up having more tryptophan than is necessary for protein synthesis, your body is able to convert that tryptophan to niacin, which is, as we mentioned, a nutrient that your body needs uh, for metabolism. And what's cool is that the estrogen in birth control pills actually seem to make that process more efficient. So your body is able to convert more of that tryptophan to niacin. So it is thought that, you know, people that are on birth control pills may actually have slightly lower needs for niacin. This isn't telling you, okay, you know what? I'll cut back on my niacin because <laughs> I just started my birth control. It's kind of like a fun fact about one of the ways that estrogen can affect your body. Now let's talk about some nutrients where, you know, if you're on birth control pills, maybe you need to be a little more mindful of your intake. So one of them is vitamin B6. And vitamin B6 actually plays a lot of roles in our bodies. It's mm -hmm. involved in a lot of different enzyme processes. It's involved in our immune system, protein metabolism, gluconeogenesis. It does a lot of stuff. A lot of like super early research, especially when back in the day when the estrogen content of oral contraceptives were very, very high, a lot of the early days research did show that, you know, vitamin B6 status was much lower in people that were taking oral contraceptives. However, it seems like, you know, as time has went on and the estrogen content of these pills has gone down, the research has been a little bit more mixed. And you know, something to note is that in the 60s and 70s, and that's like when oral contraceptives first came out was in the 60s, there are more mixed results, but some more recent research shows that women on these newer formulations of birth control with lower levels of estrogen still have lower levels of B6 in their blood. Even though research seemed to show that these oral contraceptives may compromise vitamin B6 status, oddly enough, you know, supplementing with B6 didn't really seem to help with that. And I mean, generally speaking, we do know that, you know, getting your nutrients from food should be the top priority anyway. So some foods that, you know, vitamin B6 is abundant in are things like poultry, pork, fish, nuts, and grains as well. Research here is a little bit mixed as to, okay, what are the effects? But the good thing is, is all of those foods are really healthy, good foods that are part of a healthy diet. Another B vitamin that may be a nutrient of concern for those that are on oral contraceptives is folate. 
And folate is something that's super important. It's necessary for making DNA and for cell division. You may have heard about folate being really important, especially during a time like pregnancy. Make sure you watch our video about pregnancy to, to learn about all about folate. Exactly as Rabina mentioned, we think of folate, we think of pregnancy. There was some early research on oral contraceptives that showed that folate was lower in women who were on oral contraceptives. And you know, I think similar to a lot of the nutrients we've already talked about is like, there's so many different formulations. The formulations have changed so much that, you know, it's hard to necessarily translate that research from a long time ago to today. But the thing is, is that concern is still there for a lot of people. And you know, folate is really, really important for the development of a fetus. So I guess the, while well, a lot of the concern from a public health standpoint is if oral contraceptives do deplete folate and then you go off of them and you become pregnant, is that increasing the risk of neural tube defects because of the role of folate in cell differentiation and the neural tube is kind of like the precursor to your nervous system and your body. Super important stuff. Super important stuff, exactly. We've seen lots of public health initiatives to increase the amount of folate that's fortified in grains to reduce the issue of neural tube defects. There is a recommendation that all people who could become pregnant do take a folate supplement. The reason that it's recommended that all people that could become pregnant just consistently take folate supplements is because that neural tube development happens very early on in the pregnancy. And a lot of times it happens before a person is even aware that they're pregnant. So there is some concern that, you know, waiting till you're aware that you're pregnant to take the folate, you know, might might be too late at that point. And what's really interesting is there is um, a couple brands of oral contraceptives that are including folate into the pill, which is really nice. It's very, yeah, very nice. There's one that was approved by the FDA, I think it was in 2012. Great initiative. So shout out to that. That, company. that meant that, yeah, <laughs> that company. That's I think the only time a pharmaceutical company is probably gonna get a shout out on this, yeah. on this channel. So shout out to them. Enjoy it, yeah. this company. <laughs> Shall we talk about B12? We should talk about B12. B12 works very intimately with folate mm -hmm. as well. So it is also really important for cell division and DNA and keeping your blood cells and your nerve cells really happy and healthy as well. Yeah, there's like a special type of anemia just for if you don't have enough B12. But we talk about B12 a lot when we talk about vegetarians and specifically vegans. Most of us get most of our B12 from animal food products. And interestingly, there is some research to suggest that vitamin B12 could be a nutrient of concern for those people on oral contraceptives, which really ups the stakes a little bit for any vegans mm -hmm. who are on oral contraceptives. So this just emphasizes that, you know, if animal foods aren't really part of your diet and you know, you are on oral contraceptives, perhaps get seeking out that B12 supplement or, you know, talking to your doctor or dietitian about whether a B12 supplement is something that you could benefit from would be a great next step. And you know, I think that a lot of people are really scared of, you know, oral contraceptives. And I know there are many, many people who've had ne very negative experiences with, you know, side effects. Um, but actually what inspired this video is I've had so many people ask me like, what about birth control? Does that do anything to my nutrition? The thing that I took away was that things are better on the nutritional side than I thought they were. I feel pleasantly surprised, surprised as well. And to be honest, I think I'm more surprised by the fact that there is so much research on the topic yes especially from like the 60s, 60s and, and 70s because like who was doing research on women or like women's health in generally the 60s? speaking science <laughs> does not care about females but they do care about continue on the the species so maybe it was like making sure like women didn't die before they could have a baby or something that's, a that's really probably like the motivation good point it's my cynical view of, <laughs> of why these studies were done i completely agree though like i remember when we were doing research for our breastfeeding video yeah because you know there's some nutrients where you know even if you're not consuming enough as the person breastfeeding the amount of that nutrient in the milk ends up staying fairly constant mm -hmm. so it'll just take the the person who's breastfeeding their you. stores and a lot of the papers were like oh yeah so don't worry the about baby's it. Fine. The baby's fine. The milk is fine. So don't worry about it. And it's like, wait, wait what about the, the person, person who's breastfeeding? Exactly. Like, so anyway, my point is, I was very pleasantly surprised, surprised by no, how much research. That's a very good point. Thing. That is a very good point. Also very much surprised by, I thought that the weight gain piece was like just a part of birth control. Like, I just I thought that's too. what it was. And I'm pretty sure even my doctor might have mentioned it to me. And I was surprised by the fact that the research doesn't support that. Overall, 
oral contraceptives. They've been a great advancement for women. And an advancement for women is an advancement for all. True. Yes, they have their pros and cons, but from a nutritional standpoint, there may be some effect on some B vitamins, but having a good, healthy, balanced diet and making sure you're getting a good amount of, you know, fruits and vegetables, whole grains, unprocessed meats, you should be good to go. And that's kind of just like the advice for everyone's healthy eating. Really. Absolutely. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. And follow us on our Instagram and TikTok. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.